Never let a woman go, even when you know she can always be replaced. She can always be replaced. No lust only grows like anger and revenge. No beauty comes and goes, but love stays until the end. Hi, I'm King Charles, and I'm going to show you how I made Drag Love Lust exclusively for Beauty Media. I uh, always start my recording process or writing process with a acoustic instrument, a guitar or a piano or a trumpet. Actually, no, I don't ever, don't even know how to play it. Um, and then once the framework of the song, or it may start as a poem, or it may start as even less than that, it may start as chords or a note any starting points good and then I come in here which is less of an inspiring room so you, I feel like I want to get most of the uh, ideas for the song somewhere uh, where the ideas come to me which isn't usually in here but now then everything goes on to a computer and I use Logic. I had I started with Logic Express. That's what I recorded uh, Love Last on, which is uh, I don't know slightly. I think it's 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 quite limited, but I didn't I didn't know any. I knew what I needed to know, but I didn't know any more. So I guess I was my own limitation. Um, I used bullet mic and a SE condenser and a uh, SM58 for pretty much everything. I recorded everything with two tracks, one with this, one with the condenser, and then uh, sort of balance the two in a uh, how I fancied. Um, then all the stuff that I couldn't do, like I, I couldn't uh, record a good kick sound um, because I didn't have a kick mic. So I found most of the um, uh, those kind of limitations end up pushing you to find a solution, um, and they always end up being within a small uh, field of possibility. So you end up with. Um, having to go with stuff, not having a choice, which I think ends up adding to the sound, um, which well, I guess is what it is. Um, so I used programmed kicks, <coughs> some, what else is on here? Marimba, I didn't even know that was on there. Uh, piano, harpsichord, or something that sounds like a harpsichord, and then random pad, that's what it's called, um, and then the rest is audio, and in this song it's um, it's quite a lot of vocal, guitar, um, keyboard, there's distorted keyboards, for, uh, there's a heavy bit in it, um, but most of it's, most of it's quite simple, and that was the first stage, sort of here, and there's the, uh, um, the first stage of production and arrangement um, and I end up with a song that I like but it's um, the sort of mixing that I uh, I'm not very good at I don't really know what I'm doing so at that stage I take it to uh, MI7 studios um, where there is a second level, second stage of production, sorting out sort of bass sounds, um, the stuff that I've overlooked, plenty of logic crimes that have to be uh, fixed and um, altered, and sort of stuff like that, and then they mix it, make it sound sweet. In this track, the piano would have come first, which 
sounds like this. Really simple. Just just notes. Yeah, without a acoustic piano, without a real piano, it can often sound a little bit daft unless you've got an amazing like Nord piano keyboard sounds, which I don't. Uh, I've just got these Logic ones, so I have to like put a few things on it to make it sound um, like, more like an actual piano. Which is so I put on some compression, some reverb, and some EQ. Took off the bass. Usually, I don't really know why I'd, I would do like I would fiddle around with stuff until it works. I could actually know how compression really works. Um, ratios, someone explained it to me once, but I found just by sort of ear how something you want it to sound. Once you get there, I don't wonder how I've got there. I just leave it, and then because I've got there, I think. But then there's there's loads of stuff that always can be improved. Um, I use the piano as the framework because it's something to work off. It's like the foundation that you can put things on top of and once uh, you've developed it eventually you can sort of almost take the piano away but it's great to have a and I chose not to in this song but it's great to have that um, framework as something to build on and a lot of the process of recording uh, the after the song's written, the process of recording is like a secondary writing phase, where, which is you know really the the, the uh, important bit how it actually the song sounds because there's a thousand ways you can record a song you know you can with the piano bass line you know I could have turned it into a I don't know a drum and bass tune it would have been rubbish but I could have tried if you see what I mean there's loads of different ways you can. Uh, um, produce something. Drums sound like yep, pretty active. But I suppose it gets. I think I have more drums in here. Let's have a look. So like when everything's. Like you can tell that it sounds absolutely rubbish when it's um, like the drum sound is weak, which is my biggest limitation at the moment, which is what I mainly sort out at the second stage. As you can tell from my amazing drum sound, <laughs> um, I record pretty much everything separately. I just call like hi hats and the snare together, and then toms together and then I never actually bothered with the kick drum because there's better sounds than this and um, my drumming is pretty wiggy so everything's chopped up um, quite a lot and then looped or you know stuffed together uh, in a way um, and then I always have to fill around quite a lot with them to try and get it to sound good. But let's hear it like. Yeah, so I guess the drums will actually change quite a lot through this. There's some smashy smashy drums, some like this is a good bit. <laughs> bit more like party, but it's all quite basic. Compression, compression, EQ, A verb. A verb's my favourite logic express um uh reverb, just turn it on and away you go. What have we got? Three, four drum tracks, and um, and they in heard individually they would have compression or uh, reverb on them. 
Well, it's all a bit of a mess, really. Everything gets put on whatever track's available at the time. And there's snare and hats on one. And then there's another snare mic, uh, which ties in with that. That'll be recorded at the same time. And then there's another snare mic. And then there's a condenser snare mic. But don't take my word for it. What's actually on there may not be what it says is on there. Um, <laughs> it all ends up. All sounds the same at the end of the day, I think. What I would usually do is record, is get the framework out. So I'd get the um, keyboards, and then I'd do vocals so I know where I am. And then I'd do things like put in the kick, and then the snare and the hi-hats, and toms, if there aren't any, actually any toms here, but cymbals I'd always do separately as well. Um, not true of this track, but usually because everything just gets mushed up. Um, and then I'd probably put on guitar. Is that yeah? There's guitar, which I would record out of my amp through a uh, condense condenser, um, and then unless. I'd, I'd always do the effects before it went into the amp, so I didn't actually have to actually do that much once it's in here. There's still some compression on it and nothing else really. Sometimes they, I'd reverse it or like chop it up, and um, this is quite a sort of, I don't know, I feel like it's quite an organic y song, so it, there's not that much in the way of like glitches and um, like reversed guitars uh, but it, yeah it's just quite straight obviously guitar solos <laughs> So that's very easy, and then, but that always comes once the framework's done. I think the vocals always, once you've got the choruses, verses, and stuff in place, it then frees you up to like where you're going to put the next, where you're going to put the guitar bits, where you're going to put the different beats, uh, where you're going to, um, you know, all that, all that stuff is really easy just to play around with once you're on on Logic, and you, what, you sort of don't, I don't really get a grip of it when I've just got a guitar in my hand because I don't um, I don't write with the band so we don't sort of go to a rehearsal studio with a new song I have a new song and then go here and then go to the rehearsal studio rather than the other way around um, and then there's probably probably the main part of this song is, is the vocal and I've just stacked it up loads of times with this but it like, it's really warm but it's also it's also kind of crackly, and uh, you can often end up m it not sounding very clear, um, which is and then like you can sound like you're kind of muffled as well, and then like poppy and so that. Uh, how many tracks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Vocal tracks. No woman go even when you know she can always be replaced. She can always be replaced. No last of the rose like anger and revenge. No beauty comes and goes, but love stays until the end. Yeah, so that's that vocal, and then usually I double double vocals up but the so that's that's those vocals yeah, so everything, everything goes in. All the sounds 
basically what I'm trying to do, what I try and do here is just get the sounds in, get the arrangement, get the, um, basically get the song, but it's, it's never really, I mean it ends up not really sounding like sort of studio worthy, I mean it's the way I want it to sound, but it's not the way anyone would want to listen to it, I reckon, <laughs> you see what I mean, um, and the other, there's bass, where's the bass at? Here's some bass. No idea that was in there. That must be in the heavy bit. But it stops halfway through that, that's interesting. Loads of bass on the EQ and some Stanley compression. Yeah. I've EQ'd the bass like this, stuffed up the bass loads, so, well, I guess it, I want it to sound like bass. Really bassy, because there's, I don't know, like a screeching guitar in it and high vocals. Um, so I want to see it. But there's no other bass in it. I don't know where that, I don't even know, it's only hot. That only appears once, it's a bit of a phantom audio track. Oh, yeah, marimba. Combining sounds is quite interesting. Um, I went to see Rizalka the other day, and the, I love the use of the oboe and the flute at the same time, playing the same part. It made an amazing sound. So I tr tried to like combine different sounds, so like hard sounds and soft sounds yeah, so that you end up with. So I've got a marimba with the piano playing exactly the same thing. Which gives it a little like gives it like a woody sound. Yeah. Slightly more percussive, like the piano really is, but it's uh, I forgot that was in there as well. The EQ, a little bit of mid range, a little bit of treble range. Boosted, not that much, no more than necessary. Yeah, I love that rhythm, moves things. That's just on the rim of a. Um, I get a lot of room sound. There's a lot of, there's a lot of. I sometimes record like vocals while the track's still running. Um, which I don't know whether is a good idea, but. Even when you know she can always be replaced, she can always... Now that sounds quite clean. I think that was probably with headphones. But it always bleeds through headphones anyway, so... Um, it sometimes adds to the sort of... If a song's thin, it sometimes just sort of... plumps it up a bit. Um, I think, in terms of tracks, that's pretty much what's going on. There's 32, 31 audio tracks. And... Four software tracks in use. So when I finish the song in this studio, I load, I take it to MI7, load it up into they use Pro Tools, um, and they sort of get. There's a sort of process that, that I mean they'll tell you about more where it's is it you know getting drums in tune. We often recall, re-record drums. I go and re-record in their studio, um, which um, is sometimes more necessary than others. Sometimes it doesn't work because the drum sound sometimes is good in here and sometimes it's not like we record re-recorded drums in, on this track um, and got it all in time, like quantizing stuff. Um, basically making everything sound a bit better and then I mean I think the most important phase at my seven is the mixing process like going through all the different tracks making each one sound individually good giving it you know the right sort of sense of space stuff like that um, which um, I know I, I never I don't put any time into so uh, it, it goes from being um, 
it changes quickly, basically. I think it's just, I mean, just in the, in in terms of the sound, it has uh, not the sound, the kind of um, slickness of it, um, which is good, I suppose. Um, and then once that's all done, we have a another think about other stuff that we could put in different. So this is like a secondary production phase. Um, and different um I mean this track didn't really change a huge amount. Um most of this was mixing and extra drums and <coughs> sorting out um getting things a bit more together, cutting down sort of noise. To be honest it's all a mystery to me, I don't know what they do there, it's brilliant. Um uh yeah. So now we are in MI7 studio, Florida. Um, <laughs> this is Max. Wait, well, you can introduce yourselves. I'm Max. I am the studio assistant. I'm James. I run MI7. I'm one of the producers, co-producing with, with Charles on this album. I'm Charles. I'm the boss. I'm in charge of everything. <laughs> this is... Uh, <laughs> That's what he was going to say. Well, I'm Mitch. I, I run I'm with MI7 with James. Um, we do a bit of production. And I'm Jeff. I'm the main engineer. Well, we're here to look at uh, what the final uh, part of Love Lust. I, I'm sure you've seen the first part at right. Charles's house. Here we kind of take it apart and try and reconstruct it again and try and stay true to these original recordings. First of all, um, when Charles brings his, uh, when he brings his logic song into, into the studio, first thing I have to do is go through it and uh, just tidy things up, just uh, see if there's any what I call logic crimes been involved, um, which is if, which is just um, a, few, a little bit, it takes about five minutes, yeah. <laughs> five minutes work. <laughs> just checking like, all the bits of audio are on the, on the right tracks and just getting my head around and just listening to things, see, what, see what's there and uh, making a mental note of what needs to be done in terms of cleaning up or or what what have you, um, maybe seeing any parts that might be might need to be redone or you know, just just basically seeing what's there. Um, then uh, then consolidating the uh, audio, um, making a decision whether if the effects and sounds he's got from the logic song need to be kept or whether we just want to take the raw files. Um, and then uh, yeah, transferring it over to Pro Tools, where the real business begins. I prefer to use Pro Tools um, over Logic because when it comes to, um, I think it's superior to um, the Logic for recording audio and generally in use in a, in a recording session. I think it's, it works better um, just because of the way you can set the, um, you can uh, Listen through the through the machine without um, hardly any latency. It's a big big one for me with the, the, yeah, wow. the TDM system. Um, so that makes headphone mixes and all of that sort of thing a lot easier. Even though we do have a desk, uh, nice desk. Um, <laughs> but it means that doing this way, I can set the headphone mixes up on the computer and then it, we can come back to it two days later, or whatever, and it's exactly the same. So that makes everyone much more comfortable, doesn't it, Mitch? Yes, it does. Um, <laughs> I guess that's obviously a bit of consistency makes everyone feel happy, um, which is important. So, um, yeah, using that, I prefer the plugins on Pro Tools, uh, and it costs so much money, it's got to be better, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, reassuringly expensive. It works for a lot of, lot of things, doesn't it? Yeah. Though we do have a logic system in the other yeah. room, by the way, so we're not. Pro Tools buyer, so any Absolutely endorsement, not. Logic, any logic, endorsement logic, from Logic, logic. No, yeah. I'm here, I've just got chance to buy Logic 9, uh, uh, any uh, endorsement uh, from Logic. Uh, it improves all the time, Apple. I have to say. The new, uh, the it's new, great. The new, new guitar, the new guitar pedal thing on it, so much better. Deep. So much better, those plugins are great. So, um, yeah, that's that's the main reason. And things like editing, uh, editing in Pro Tools, I find editing whole like whole multi tracks is a lot lot easier than in Logic. Um, I like the playlist thing in, in Pro Tools. It keeps the whole arrangement page a lot clearer, uh, which actually focuses your mind on what you're trying to do rather than 
um, you know, having hundreds and hundreds of tracks everywhere, all, all going down the same channel, and you don't know what, where things are coming from. Um, yeah. Well, the Logic Mind has a playlist thing, then. We've, we've caught up. Yeah. So this track has got um, has got uh, several like it's, it's got a big heavy bit in the middle. Um, so we've got several different sort of bits of the, the, the drum, the different drum sections. So starting off with his, his little tappity tap on the rim. Tap tap on the rim. Which is all good. And then it goes into this heavy section. So at that point, so we've got plenty of compression from this. 1176 emulation and that's mixed in with there's a snare mic here as well nice and trashy I've used the 1176 just to tame the um, tame the snare a little bit and take it off So when he's hitting the snare, you can hear the snare a lot more. Mm -hmm. But the hi hats are being pushed down because um, hi hats get over everything and um, can be very irritating. So, got to keep them under control at all times. In the heavy bit, we also added to Charles's drums with another another drum set. I used a um, a uh, gated reverb from an old SPX90, which is down here. There go. So that's that's a I don't know how old those units are. Ancient. Got a bit of a, bit of a classic sound to it. So and also there's running along along with that. There's a kick sample just to keep a, a bit of consistency in the kick. So. To be honest, I can't remember if that's a uh, an external one or just one we took from from there. But, um, there it is. That's the job. This is a tape emulation plugin by uh, Massey, um, which is which is great and very cheap, in fact. So this is on the toms. That, that's just giving them just sort of solidifies the toms a little bit. Um, but no, apart from that, there's uh, I basically treated those drums as a as a group, the whole thing. I mean, you can see there's I don't know, there's about eight mics on those on those drums, but they're just all bust together, and I just treated the whole thing as a group. Um, put it with a bit of with quite a lot of compression. <laughs> So quite a lot of uh, compression from this 6, 7, uh, 660 um, and some EQ. Yeah, so the EQs get come on and off during throughout the track. Different because like I say this track's got quite distinct sections. So um, yeah, so different EQs for different sections. There's an electronic kick which runs right at the start of the tune. And that changes that we use different um, different settings on that as well during the tune. So it's quite it's got a high pass at the start. 
because at the start of the tune it needs to be quite soft and then later on it just needs to toughen up a bit. This URS EQ comes in just for this mid late section. <coughs> It goes duller there. And then back to that at the end. Bass wise, the only bit of bass is these 12 bars. We yeah, discovered that today. I thought, well, okay. So I've just got this little bit of bass. Is that me playing that mate? So a bit of, bit of crunch from the um, sans on. A little bit of amp farm. So just to tough, toughen it up a bit really. And they've done a little cut of 200 on that. Um, which is pretty subtle. One thing with Charles's sound is that when it comes from Logic, is he loves a bit of compression. Um, if, you, um, if you've seen, you've seen the Logic songs. Um, he loves compression and Averb. There is two favourite favourite plugins, and he puts it on everything pretty much. Um, normally at the same setting, so quite often they're absolutely slamming. So um, a lot of the time when we were doing this was that we were it was like having to listen to how he, how he's done it and then trying to get a similar sort of vibe going on so you see on this guitar the 660 is really really pushed hard take that off It's great for brightening stuff up. In general, it's all brightening. Um, so then there's four more tracks of guitars that are doing various various things. This is on the heavy section and it, it all just quite a match up of guitars. There's a lot of um, it, in this heavy section. In this heavy section, there's quite a lot of symbols and everything going on. So there's a lot of a lot of things going whoosh, like that. So as a fact, it's more about keeping the guitars quite quite dull in that section. Mm. Because otherwise, you have too much stuff being really bright, and just sort of take your head off a bit. And so it didn't really do much to those, to be honest. Didn't it? they? They, they were just sort of working as they were. So it was just a bit of. Mm. Bit, bit, bit of low cut on them. That was pretty much it. Yeah. Um, so piano, piano sound here. This actually um, I EQ'd with some outboard using this uh, the TLA parametric EQ, which is like a valve EQ. Which is pretty sweet. Um, just went out, came back in, and then just crusted up a little bit with the the, uh, the sans -on. So that, All that distortion. That's that's the sound that we took from from Logic. That's pretty much uh, bounced it with it with all his uh, all his stuff on it. I think we actually had it initially without all the all the effects on it, but um, after fiddling around a bit, it was just. Went back to his Logic song and, and took a bounce with, it with, all the, with all the plugins he had on it. Um, mm. So I remember. And then there's a marimba. So just got a bit of compression. And the tape, the tape thing again. Then we come.
down to his vocal. So we spent quite a bit of time trying to emulate the sound of the A-verb on Logic um, using the, the D-verb on Pro Tools, which is like the, what, the native one. So we came, came to a setting which, which is pretty similar to the A-verb. Um, which he used in his vocal just because we were really feeling that sound. Um, so we've got that one there. A DSA. It's another DSA by uh, Massey. Massey's a guy I think he used to work for um, for Eventide and he programmed a lot of the like the Sound Toys plugins which are wicked. And uh, now he's done, doing his own ones and they're, they're all about $50. Uh, yeah. And they're, they're brilliant. I think this one was he, he, he often uses a, his uh, bullet mic, for, um, which is like a little short one that you normally see people use for a, on a harmonica, which instantly gives his voice quite a thin, well, very distinctive sound, a little bit distorted as well, which is great, um, but you've just got to be careful that it doesn't sort of take your head off because it can be a bit sort of piercing, so that's what the, uh, the DS is doing. Oh look, you a song, Mississippi you is a bell, I even sent you flowers yeah, when you felt ill, time. you've the strength of the Greeks, you are God's masterpiece, you're every triumph, every victory, I believe in every breath you breathe. Um, and you'll notice I've got the, I've got the, the reverb, it's actually the first thing on the track, and then there's a compressor after it, which is a bit, bit of a strange way to do things, but that was the, that was the way he had it on Logic, and that was the sound that we wanted for this for this vocal so it is um sometimes you've got to do those things we've got uh one two three four five six seven eight nine it's it's like it's like four harmonies and then the bit which i've called like the choir so we've got this and i always imagined you'd be by my side whether i'm hiding in the city or i'm tearing through the wall so we got that bit, then when it gets to this section as a whole. Never let a woman go, even when you know she can always be replaced, she can always be replaced. No lust only grows like anger and revenge. Your beauty comes and goes, but love stays until the end. Never let a So the whole sort of quarry quarry bit. Basically just yeah, just build, building up on those harmonies there for the um for the second chorus and they stay in later on later on in the track. So they're they're all grouped together and uh processed as a group again with the with the same A verb into a into a compressor and then sort of warmed up with this uh this plugin, which is um, another another different tape emulation plugin, which um, is also good for for, ju uh, for just just warms warms things up a bit, compresses it slightly, yeah, as 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 sort of tape would, um, sort of thickens things up a bit, which is nice, especially because all these all the, I think a lot of these vocals are recorded on the bullet, so. You get a lot of them. You get a lot of build-up of sort of high frequencies, so it's nice to warm it up a little bit. Um, I tend to, I like to process things rather than reaching for EQ every time. It's like I tend to like to use as many other things as I can and use EQ as a last resort because I think you get a bit more of a natural sound like that. So. Um, in this section, I used a um, reverse reverb on the on the vocals. Um, so you reverse them, run them for the reverb, and then reverse the reverse reverb, so it runs forwards and sounds like that. Um, it's quite a nice, nice effect for this section. We just wanted something a bit sort of otherworldly. So you have the 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 forward vocal here and the reverse vocal here. So reverse that one, run it through the reverb and then reverse the file I got from running it through the reverb. Okay, so this next sound was made by James um, 
<laughs> this sound is, is interesting. Sometimes we feel uh, like we might just add a, a, an idea occasionally to to just uh, enhance a certain section or something. Um, in this case, it's quite interesting because we were just singing the idea to ourselves. We were like, what kind of sound, what, what was going to generate that kind of sound? And a bit of head scratching. We, after a bit of head scratch, scratching, we um, decided that we'd just I just do it on the mic with my mouth. I was trying to emulate a synth, and then uh, Jeff's done certain processing on it. But this this sound has actually just been sung to sound like a synth. You know? So we've recorded it on a microphone, and then Jeff's processed it through uh, oil shade on the, through a few filters and things. So that's that's going through um, this uh, sort of phaser plugin. Um, but there's a bit of automation on it, I think. Yeah, so I'm just sort of twisting the frequency up as it goes. If you can look at, I don't know, look at this frequency thing here. Um, and then it's going into a delay and a reverb. The reverbs. Our favourite D-verb. Okay, so now if I take all the effects off, you can hear what it sounds like in the raw. Good for you, James. <laughs> okay. Come on! Amazing what can come out of your mouth sometimes. Wow. That is pretty much it. Yeah, I've been just looking at that. There's actually less, less things processing and stuff going on than I remember. But um, it just shows that a track's you know, combination and it's, it becomes a, more than the sum of its parts. You know? And... Um, and also, obviously, you know the sounds, the guitar sounds, and what have you. Were, like we said before, were were done by Charles, and he, you know, we didn't want to. No point diving in there and changing everything. It's, if it's if it's good and it's working, it's about when you bring stuff here. It's about us taking the track forward rather than stripping it down to nothing and re re recording and reinventing it. On the master, I've just got a um, another tape emulation plugin. It's just it helps. I, I put that on right at the start of the mix as well. I mix into it. Um, which which uh, which helps, um, yeah. Sometimes I use compression stuff on the bus, but for this, in this instance, didn't need to. No. The only difficult bit was the heavy section. That, that, that was the only because um, you know, it's always when you've got a track that goes from quiet sort of chill and then suddenly goes to a heavy heavy section. It's it's getting that getting that impact, um, just getting the balance of that. So it's so it's enough and it's not it's not. Completely takes your head off. Um, just getting that, just getting that balance. It was, that was the only, that was the only tricky thing, really. I would say. Okay, so uh, this is King Charles and all of us at MI7. Thank you very much for coming. This is us signing out. Bye. <laughs>